Hi, this is Ron Al, shortest name on the talk and the only French title. But no one cares who I am, and Svelte Society Day France was last month. So let's talk about this guy. A big fat pie, fashionably served with ice cream. You might know it as pie a la mode, and it's going to be our protagonist today and represent the web. Its mission, hopefully, is to get you excited about the juicy things you can do with the web, because it's a wondrous platform and it's prevailingly current. Svelte helps us embrace those qualities by sweetening the deal. That's the ice cream on top. And like all protagonists, Pi a la mode has an origin story. The year is 1886. Professor Charles Watson Townsend pays a New York hotel his patronage where he orders a regular apple pie. And before a stroke of genius escapes him, he requests a side of ice cream to accompany it. The combination is simple, yet a magnitude greater than the sum of its parts. Utterly astounded, a fellow guest asks him what the dish is called. Pie a la mode. A la mode. In fashion, up to date. Sometime later, the professor is on the prowl for more pie and barges into another hotel. Pray tell this establishment serves pie a la mode. You what? Do it. And so the waiter tells the manager about this crazy man's request, to which the manager shouts, We shall never let some old joint do us better. Henceforth we shall serve pie a la mode all day, every day. And they did. After the same conversations happened at a dozen other hotels, suddenly everyone was serving pie a la mode. Fast forward 150 years, and now we're all very hungry and wondering what any of this has to do with Svelte. Web a la mode. It is all the rage these days to put everything in front-end reactive frameworks. Developers are so keen to serve these bundles, they're even willing to heap them onto pages that are entirely static. The great thing about Svelte is that you can do a lot with very little. We don't want to serve another slice of cake to the pie. We want the pie itself to stand out for what it is and just add a little side of ice cream to accentuate it. After all, one of Rich Harris's first definitions for Svelte was attractively thin, graceful, stylish. So with the definition of a la mode, I guess you could say it's attractively thin, graceful, stylish, in fashion and up to date. By and large, Svelte is just vanilla coat in, vanilla coat out. So let's try this. I doubt Wikipedia is using Svelte, but we can show how much Svelte respects vanilla HTML by outright ripping this info box and shoving it straight into the REPL. So copy, paste, looking good already, but let's make it pretty. Copy. Paste. And voila, every single character here is just vanilla code that you already know. It just works. But of course, you can copy and paste this into any old HTML file. Let's go to the ice cream part. Info box. Copy this. So we can paste it here. And we're just gonna format this so our eyes don't bleed. Then we can add the lifeblood of any reactive framework. Props. And then we begin. And now we have a component, so let's use that. And I have the props already copied, so let's just pop that up. And this is felt, so it's going to be about felt. Image, we're going to copy straight from here. Thank you. Straight in there. Description is attractively thin, graceful, stylish, in fashion, 
and up to date. Type script is now supported. Of course, Svelte is doing pretty well, so upwards and onwards. Origin, newsrooms, region, the internet, creator, that guy, and as we know, the ingredients are HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Link text. Well, there was a cookbook link before for Pi a la mode, so it's fitting that we grab this. Svelte recipes. Link is going to be that. And now to use it, info box, info, bam. And we've got our component made from some plain HTML and CSS. And the only thing we changed was the content and the URLs. But we're not done here. You can download this code straight from the REPL and have a ready to build Svelte project. So we're going to do exactly that. So there's the code we just wrote. We're going to just build it. npm run build. Grab our bundle, and I'm just going to make one small change. That'll do it. I'm going to copy that. And I want to go somewhere you might be familiar with. There we go. Love those SVGs. Good talk. Do not miss that one. But there might be a few too many speakers. Yeah. Let's see. Don't need that, don't need that, don't need that. Definitely don't want that. We've got our bundle JS from earlier, so I'm just gonna paste that and bam. Perfect. Now I was too lazy to bring in the CSS, but that just worked. Now, obviously making short-lived graffiti isn't the point, and this was static content. But the main thing is, it just works. And when you make components for real in Svelte, the price you pay for them are minimal. Vanilla in, vanilla out. When you think vanilla web, someone's first mental picture might be this. Create some markup, style it, add a bit of logic, which is very accurate with what we've just done. We also know that the web comes with a lot more. If you've seen any of the incredible WebGL rendering out there, it's hard to believe it's running in the browser, but that is part of the web platform. If you want to do more than play and pause audio, the Web Audio API gives you access to low-level, hardcore audio engineering properties. SVGs, being XML-based, work right out of the box and let us create fun experiences that interrupt very closely with HTML and CSS. Places to check if you're itching to try something different are the big fat listing on MBN, which is a big fat list. And Chrome isn't the only target we should be developing for, but Chrome does have a very good pulse on upcoming web functionality. And what web can do dot today is very easy perusing. Just be aware that some of the features listed as supported can be deprecated. So you can do all this stuff without the user having to load a library or framework, and it's just there. How about it? Of course, there's still room on that plate for that ice cream. To paraphrase a bit from Rich Harris again, frameworks help us declaratively organize our thought process, and we can't do that so easily with just vanilla code and web APIs. It does mean the user runs an extra library, but compared to other options with boilerplate bundles in the triple digits, Svelte starts at just two kilobytes. It's what we know and love about it. Knowing that we have this small exporters options and an attractively thin graceful stylish in and an up-to-date framework to tie it all together, using an example merging just two of those web features with Svelte, Web Audio API and SVG. Nothing, 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 but reactivity, SVG, Web Audio API, Svelte. Okay, so I'm going to show you through this, but it might be a little like showing you how to draw the rest of the owl. I want to spare you the boring bits and just show you the juicy bits. 
Once the fetch occurs, uh, the store is filled with metadata, including the title, URL, and playable. Not all videos are playable in this. Uh, some of them are region locked, for example. The playback has its own store, uh, but where the magic happens is in the domain data store. And this is where the amplitude values of the audio frames are written. For control, there is a play component that uh, constructs the audio object as well as the audio context. But most importantly, it creates the analyzer node. The analyzer node is what fills our domain data store with all those amplitude values. Now, all this looks like vanilla JS and not a lick of svelte code. And it is, except for this bit at the bottom. All it is is a reactive statement that lets me control the state across the sun rising up and down, the YouTube video playing, the user clicking or hitting enter. And I did say it was SVGs. Uh, the reflection on the water takes that domain data and feeds it through what's basically a glorified string concatenation. Uh, it constructs instructions for the SVG path data, which is basically M for move here and S for cubic Bezier curves. Then it just plonks it straight in the path data. So have a play with it if you like. I really enjoyed making this, uh, especially exploring the web audio API. There's just so much for you out there as a web dev that I really urge you to explore what you can make use of. The address is audioscape.vercel.com and the source repository is here. I hope that at the very least I reminded you of what you can do with the web, uh, but even more so, I hope that you got some ideas for felt that you're really excited about bringing to life. If you want to show off something, uh, find me on Twitter and let me know. I'm Ronel, Web Alamo.